All right, guys, Ricky Waisaki. I'm out here at Northwoods Gold. I'm doing a mic'd up practice round with Gatekeeper Media. Stay tuned to my channel for the front nine coverage and head over to Gatekeeper for the back nine. So we'll start off with hole one. We got a par three, 345 feet. We got like three or four routes on this hole. I'm gonna be choosing the, the wide right hyzer, hyzer shot. Uh, it's the narrowest gap, but it gives you the best chance for birdie if you hit the gap and uh, fade in towards the basket. So I'm gonna be shooting that gap, throwing a champion firebird. Yeah, I like I like the right gap because it, I feel most comfortable hitting uh, hitting this this angle with it. Uh, the, the biggest th biggest thing about this hole is missing this first initial tree, and if you do that, you're gonna get up there for a putt every time. And I feel like that's the highest percentage play on this hole to really give me a high percentage birdie chance every time I play it. <laughs> I parked it. <laughs> that, that's I didn't skip too far either. That's how you start off the round right there, tapping birdie. <laughs> All right, now we're on hole two. This is a 419 foot par three. I'm going with the pig. I'm just trying to hit the initial gap and glide down, down the hill. It's a severe downslope about halfway down the fairway. I'm trying to glide my pig down there and uh, get myself inside. Right around circle two would be a good drive for me and uh, try and hit a long putt to get the birdie. I'm going right over his head. That's funny. Oh. Got a really weird angle here. Oh. Two and not even down the hill yet. That can happen on this one, but not ideal. Now I'm just trying to float this putter, trying to get up there. It's really about speed control on this shot. Coming downhill with the slow putter, it wants to carry too deep. So I'm just gonna kind of throw a little air bounce, stall it out. Yeah, this is just a practice round. Luckily, I'm still figuring out my shots. Usually I play about two rounds a day and I'll play like two, you know, three or four, sometimes five shots on, on each hole. And then if I'm playing two rounds, I'm really getting a lot of reps in. So yeah, for me, my practice rounds are all about muscle memory. Yeah, I'm not gonna throw a perfect shot on every, every shot, but I really see what, what tweaks and what changes I have to make on each shot. So. That's what I'm thinking about when I'm throwing. Obviously, I want to score well, but more importantly, I want to get my shots figured out so that way I know what I'm doing during the tournament. Come on, give me the save. Oh. All right, got a double. <laughs> this hole's like a par three and a half almost, but. All right, now we're out here at hole three. This hole is a 550 foot par four. I'm gonna throw a sidearm, but it's a tight, narrow gap off the, off the, right off the bat, and you want to hyzer into an open field that kind of turns right into the landing zone. So I'm not really picking a spot, I'm just trying to hit the gap, get out there, past all the trees, and kind of skip right, finish right for an upshot into the basket. Going with the destroyer. It's really trying to hit it hard right at that tree in the middle and fade right to the right of it, skip. Something like that. This might hit that tree though. All right, that's money. Sweet. Got out in the field. Should be a wide open, pretty routine upshot from there. This tee shot is the most important on this one. A lot of these holes, it's either the drive or the tee shot. That one of the two. I mean, obviously, I throw two good shots on both, but this one's a. What's up, guys? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for letting me play through. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, this one I say the drive is more important just to give yourself a high percentage chance on the second shot. That's the name of the game out here at Northwoods. Just putting yourself in position, then capitalizing on the upshots. 
Yep, just wide in the open. Even if I hydro out too much, I don't mind being over here, which is why I don't mind finishing right, but center is always good. All right. So I'm gonna throw a sidearm pig and kind of float it up there. There's a little ravine right in front of the basket. So I'm trying to go over the ravine um, and not float it too far. So there's a little backstop of the fence. So I'm definitely thinking about that. Um, but if anything, I'm trying to go deep and play a maybe 20, 20, 30 footer coming back, even give it a little run, um, but not get too crazy. Hit the gap, speed control, that's what I'm thinking right now. And go in, yes, got it, got it. Oh, come on. Oh, see, I told you I'd give it a little run. Oh, need to get that stick back after hole two. Dang it. Oh, I thought I made it. Oh. I was seeing a little raptor-like action on the mic. That would have been sick. <laughs> raptor over the ravine. <laughs> oh, dang it. I guess you don't need speed control if you hit the basket. <laughs> Did you think that was going in? Did it look good? <laughs> All right. All right, well, I got in position, I thought, going about 20 feet deep, but I didn't... <laughs> Didn't know I was gonna hit the bat. I was trying to hit the basket, but it's always nice when you do what you're trying. This little downhill putt here. All right, back on the track. Yeah, double bogey in hole two sucks, but something to wear courses like this stuff. That stuff's gonna happen. You just gotta you gotta rack up a lot of birdies to make up for it. But I'm up. I can do that. Hole four is a 540 foot par four. I'm throwing a layup with a sidearm. I'm choosing the right gap. So there's, a, there's an up the middle gap and a right gap. I'm gonna be throwing a right to left sidearm, just placing myself somewhere near the short tee. There's a short tee about 250 feet up the fairway. That's a good landing point for me. If anything, you might even see me favor a little bit left and get a little kickback, um, throw a little bit of pretty, uh, pretty severe angle on it. So um, if anything, I don't mind being a little left and do a little straddle out, just trying to, first shot's really just placement, not distance. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the standstill here because I'm like I said, it's just placement. I'm going for distance right now. So I'm gonna do a standstill. A lot of times when I'm doing that, I get a little bit more control and don't have to sacrifice the, the uh, distance because it doesn't really matter right now. Uh, I'm just aiming at that little fat tree right there and throwing a little angle on it and uh, turning right before it, trying to get that tee pad. It's favoring a little left right now. It's gonna slide and probably just go straight. Yeah, I hit the tee pad. <laughs> uh, it should be like, just on feel right now, I've thrown this shot a lot of times. I'm probably 20 to 30 feet past the tee pad right now. Um, yeah, you, you just get uh, muscle memory just takes over and I can feel exactly how that shot came out of my hand. Um, so I was real happy with that. Like I said, I'm trying to throw that anti sidearm. And uh, a lot of times if I pull it to the left a little bit too much, I'll even get a little kickback into the fairway. And so that's definitely, definitely on my mind. Uh, I'm really playing that slope of that little bit of kickback and uh, I played it perfect, yep. About 20, 30 feet past the tee pad. I think I slid on it for a little bit. But yeah, that's a pig shot for me. I feel real comfortable with that one. And depending how, you know, I'm, I'm always paying attention to how short or long I am of this tee pad, because then I, you know, I may throw a rock from up there versus a, a tee bird back here, just because of the distance. So I'm always paying attention to how far, uh, reference point wise, to uh, landing zones. All right. And like I was talking about earlier, sometimes I'll land in here and I'm fine with that because I can do a little stretch out sidearm and still have a nice tunnel to the basket. Obviously this is ideal, but all right. Takes us to point A right now on this hole. And I'm gonna go, it's right between a rock and a pig. Kind of what I'm thinking about. Uh, I think I'm gonna go pig. If you hit the gap on this shot, a lot of times they actually seem to skip a little too far and this gravity kind of takes them deep. So. Uh, obviously, I'm just trying to hit the gap. It's a pretty narrow gap, but hit the gaps number one and then speed control number two. If I do go deep, that's all right, but that's why I'm going with the pig. Should be a little bit better speed control coming into the green. Oh, let's pull it a little bit, might get through. Yes. That's it. Oh, yeah, I like that. It's going to be in the rough a little bit, but 25 foot straddle putt probably. I pulled it a little bit more than I wanted, got a little lucky, but. I got through, 
I got shellacked on hole, on hole two, so I think it made up for that. <laughs> uh, yeah, but this tunnel, I, I, I try to get a lot of reps on, in on these shots and throw quality shots, even in practice rounds like this, because that really builds my confidence going into the tournament. If I just consistently really puncture these gaps, focus on my speed control, landing flat on these greens and not skipping too far. So I'm pretty happy so far with my play, minus hole two, but that's something I can definitely clean up. I'm kind of not glad that I did it now in a practice round like this, but kind of see, see the teeth on that hole and, you know, really just focus on my next tee shot during the tournament, just hitting the gap and getting a three, long chance at two. Oh, I did went a little deeper than I thought, but I got a window. See, like this is kind of normal on this hole. A lot of people will do this. I even threw the peg and still went deep. So it's just everyone just gets so focused on hitting that gap and then you just, you really want to get confident at hitting that angle and then you forget about speed control. So, but still happy with the uphill 35, 40 footer here. All right, just trying to get the leverage from my back legs and really just push off, really make up for that uphill putt here. Here we go, yeah, let's go. Really happy with how I played that hole actually. Got the birdie, hit the gap on the drive, really consistent, high percentage play on that hole. I'm not really having to do anything crazy to get the birdie, and I feel like I can do that during the tournament. Hole five, 350 foot, par three. This hole is a slight drift to the right. It's an off-center gap, which is, makes it a little bit more challenging, so you really gotta focus on hitting that gap and drifting late. You'll see a lot of people go too early uh, or highs are out left, but you just want to make sure disc choice is super important on this hole uh, because you have to really get pick the right disc to, to fit this flight. So what I'm doing is I'm just hitting, I'm focused on hitting that gap and I know that the tree line comes and goes right after you, the trees that you can see. So I'm trying to hit, th aim at those trees with Annie and turn before them and follow the fairway towards the basket. So yeah, I'm really just throwing a pretty straight rock and forcing it over a little bit down that then on that fairway to really get that turn. Oh, too too wide. Yep. Dang it. That's why this hole is so tough. Automatic bogey right there, basically. Big mistake. Big mistake right there. Yeah, there's basically no scrambling from there. Dead meat. Bummer, but that's why I'm out here still learning. I'm still learning. It's, uh, yeah, this is, like I said, it was an off-center gap. So off-center gaps are always the hardest because uh, just the way it lines up is uh, makes it hardest to hit. But I can definitely hit it, and I, I will hit it, and I will practice until I don't miss it. But right now I'm just going to have to scramble. Try and save, try and pull a crazy, crazy three, but more than likely probably just four. Let's see what I have in there. Yeah, it's type of shot where if you throw the shot, yeah, you're just almost automatically dead for par. You're just lucky to get a bogey. All right, now, right now, it just brings me to the wood shot. You guys see me scrambling a lot, probably, more so than I like to admit. I'm pretty good at scrambling, but I got a bunch of nothing right now. I'm just going to pick a, the biggest gap I see and uh, throw it vertical, throw a roller, and that gives me the best chance to get through as many trees up there towards the basket as opposed to an air shot where you uh, don't have as much surface area to hit with a roller as you do with an air shot. So throw it vertical, try and miss as many trees as I can and just get up there for some sort of putt. Okay, so I've, I hit something pretty early, but I have a long jump putt for par. Um, yeah, the, the ideal shot, it's just like I said, these are the trees you can't this is the last tree you can see from the gap. So I'm aiming at these trees with my rock and just trying to drift a little bit in front of them. And uh, ideally, more times than not, uh, I don't even mind hitting these bushes up here and trickling on the circle's edge and trying to get in a putt here because it is a tricky angle. Um, so yeah, a lot of times you'll see people, good drives land in there and right in here, uh, which, which I'm okay with and a lot of people are just because I showed you how hard the tee shot can be. Uh, where'd that go? Get up. Oh, I gave it a pretty big bid, skipped. This is a fast green as I just showed you there. Um, yeah, you'll see me times like this when I'm really trying to save par, get a little too aggressive, but. There's a backstop back there, there's a log that I probably hit. Um, 
So yeah, that's got stuff I'm thinking about too, even if I miss it, which I'm never planning on. There's, uh, I did hit the backstop like I thought. Yep, sometimes like, yep, two double and a single already, I think I'm even. So this course is kind of up and down like that. When you throw just one drive, you can get a double or a single like I just did. Frustrating, but it's all right. All right, hole six, 370 foot par three, low ceiling. Uh, the grass is tall, so depending on how far you get down the fairway, you may or may not get a skip. So the closer to the basket, the more you'll skip versus if you're 50, 60 short, you might just Velcro in there. So those are things I'm thinking of. It's a low ceiling, so you'll see a lot of people want to throw a favor low, but I'm really just trying to challenge the limbs high and uh, throw a flex Firebird and try, try to get down there and try and hit the skippy part, which is like 30 or 40 sh short of the basket, then you'll skip to it. So challenging the high limbs a little bit, not too much, just to, so I try not to throw it too low. It's easy to do on this hole because the gap is really narrow. A little bit wide, but it's gonna get through and hopefully skip not too much. Ah, I hit that tree. So I threw that a little tight. I'm trying to, trying to throw outside that tree that I went inside. Um, yeah, I did something with my form right there that I was actually, I'm still tweaking it. I'm always tweaking my form, changing things. But basically what I did there is I stopped. I didn't fully extend. And then when you don't fully extend, your it throws your timing off. So when you do fully extend, you commit better and your timing's a lot better. So I didn't, I didn't fully extend back. So I obviously, I know I didn't throw a good shot, but I know why. And um, yeah, I'm gonna come back and play these holes and figure out my form. And I'm always, I'm always learning, always practicing, always tweaking. Um, doesn't matter who you are, how good you are. You always have to adapt, grow, and learn about your game, learn about your form. So yeah, talk back about this hole. You can kind of see how the grass gets a little bit uh, shorter up by the basket and you'll get a lot more skips and you'll see a lot of people skip into those bushes uh, versus if you hit back here, you're gonna Velcro. So I had the right height. I just end up catching this tree. If I didn't catch that tree, I probably would have been, you know, 20 feet just in the bushes over there on the left, which is totally fine with. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm really ultimately trying to throw that side of that tree and I went inside of it. So it really wasn't a good shot. Let's see if I can't save it. I have to straddle around this tree. So when I have a, I have a tree li just enough in my way to where I can't do a regular stance, I will straddle just to get it completely out of my head. And I'm not gonna hit it, but it's just more about not even worrying about it and just worrying about making it. So it's a big advantage to be able to straddle putt just as confidently as a regular putt. So I'm getting low in my putt right now. Just get, get my stance. And that way I know I can really get that leverage coming up the straddle putt, I don't really have the opportunity to go back to forward to get that momentum, so. Get up. Yeah. Cool, saved birdie. Those are always bonus birdies when I felt like I shanked the drive and I make up for it on a putt like that, so that's always nice to do that. Um, yeah, my straddle putting game's gotten a lot better. Uh, I changed my putt a little bit, as you guys know. I don't have the putter in my other hand right now. So it's just something I've been messing with. Like I said, I'm tweaking, I'm always changing my game. Uh, and so that's something that, that I'm doing a little new that a lot of people have been noticing, but my putting has been, has been great. I mean, I'm, I always pride myself on that, but even on top of that, my straddle putting has been great also. Hole seven, 400 foot par three, low ceiling, just like the previous hole. This hole I would say is a little more challenging. Uh, you got, for, in my opinion, you got two routes, the dead straight at it, which is a little bit low ceiling. And then I'm gonna throw the cut roller on the outside. It brings these trees a little bit more into play, but I'm throwing a cut roller and then gonna cut towards the basket. I just don't like the low ceiling. It just doesn't let you get the height to get to the basket. A lot of people land short, so the roller doesn't need that much height to be able to get the distance. So you'll see me throw a cut roller through those trees, go right by the cameraman and uh, hopefully roll up into the green. I don't mind going in the bushes on the left or right. I can scrap a putt from there. I'm just trying to get up there somewhere because this is a really well-guarded fairway. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm gonna try and throw a cut roller. You can see where that grass line is. I'm trying to go inside that grass line and then start shooting left, which is hopefully what my disc will do. <clears throat> Miss the trees there. Yes, I'm happy with that. Oh, I hit that last one. 
dang it, that's the risk I take on that shot. But it's it's a risk reward hole. I mean, even if from there, it's basically an automatic par at worst. I'm almost never gonna get a bogey from right there to where if you hit any of this stuff, it's a, like it can be a bogey. So I get up there for a lot for a birdie looks on this hole. It's a, it's a, it's a tough hole. Uh, it's, it's definitely a hole I expect a birdie, but I, I just uh, I hit that last tree, which happens on this one. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to cut through, just miss this tree. If I miss that tree, um, yeah, I'm gonna be up there putting. So, but yeah, I mean, it's, even if I hit that tree like here, wide open, up shot, I'm gonna get up and down from here. Nine out of 10 times, so I like my chances. I'm, I'm not fine with it, but I can uh, salvage it. So I'm just gonna throw a pig. I'm just gonna not do anything stupid. I mess up the drive and I'm just gonna concede and take a par and uh, slide my pig up to the rocks right there. A little short, but that was like worst case scenario on that shot. I'm still got a 20 footer for par. So yeah, this is the tree I hit. A lot of times I'm rolling up there into the green for a, for a two putt. But yeah, this is, a, like I said, this is a tough par three. I think at Worlds I picked up this two when I shot the course record. And um, yeah, that's this is these are the kind of holes you gotta pick up when you're, if you're gonna shoot a hot round like that. So I threw a little right, it should be 20 feet, 30 feet maybe at most. I kind of took that upshot for granted just a touch, but yeah, I'm still right here. So yeah, this is honestly like worst case scenario so far on this on the drive and the upshot, and I'm still right here, the 20 foot straddle. This basket's a little higher than normal, so I'm taking note of that because it's, yeah, you, it's not, you know, it's kind of lifted up above the air, which means the rim is higher. So I'm, my release point's a little different on this putt. So yeah, I just got the par, nothing special. Um, yeah, like I said, the drive just kind of took me out of position to even get a birdie, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, that's the, like the roller on that hole for me. It's worth is worth the risk reward because as you saw, that was worst case scenario. Best case scenario is I'm putting maybe from that similar spot for two instead of three. So it's a hole where I can definitely two it with that shot. And uh, you know, I'm very rarely am I going to four it, even if I mess it up like that. Hole eight, 680 foot par four. This is a uh, kind of dog legs right and then back left. I'm going to be throwing a roller. And I'm gonna be throwing a kind of a cut roller. I'm gonna throw it out, cut it back towards the fairway and then end on the right-hand side, giving me about 200, 250 into the basket. Um, there was a little bit of wind earlier. I don't think there's enough right now to affect my shot, but that's something I'm paying attention to. Um, I'm throwing a roller just cut, just to the right of that tree. It's gonna cut back towards the cameraman and then finish back right. So really just gonna try to hit that gap with the right angle for a roller to bomb it down there and set me up for hopefully a pretty easy three. This hole should be routine. Yeah, looks good. I might hit that tree. All right, I just missed that tree. And that's gonna be in a perfect spot right now. Back right, like I said. And that should be, that's absolutely money. Um, yeah, that's exactly what I was going for. I missed my shot by two feet. I was trying to go right at that tree. Um, I, I just got scared and didn't commit fully. And that's why it went that way instead of around and back back under. It's a low ceiling, so that's why I like the roller play. Take the air shot, it brings those limbs into play. All these limbs and all this stuff. The only thing in play for me is that tree. That's the only variable that off the tee that, uh, that affects me. If I hit that tree, it's basically, I'm dead for a birdie. Not dead, but don't have a very good chance for a birdie. But I don't hit that very often, and I'm not even thinking about hitting it. Um, but I'm actually trying to throw here. These limbs are low, but by the time my roller is going to hit the ground, it's way under it, so they're not even in play. Um, I'm hitting through this gap and trying to cut back this way towards the left side of the fairway and then curl back right. The right-hand side is the most open, so I'm really just trying to trying to favor the right-hand side. Even if I go over by these people here, um, I'm totally fine with it. Even if I go over here and cut too early, I'm totally fine with that even. Um, that's just the benefit of the roller because throwing it so hard that I'm gonna get the distance and um, just gotta hit the angle out of my hand. So, yeah, I threw the roller into the basically the, the landing zone. Um, yeah, this is a money landing zone right here. Uh, this is 
it's a low ceiling, so you want to kind of blast it, but then it gets kind of skippy up there by the green. If you go deep, you skip in those trees. Um, so it's a speed control shot right now. Um, yeah, you got to make sure that you don't don't skip too far past it. But then if you try to try to baby it, yeah, you're gonna hit the grass and just Velcro like 30, 40 short. So you got to hit the gap. Don't hit too high. This is like I said, it's a low ceiling. So I'm throwing a putter, just speed control. There's one tree I'm kind of just trying to go just to the just to the right of it and uh, slide up under the mulch. That's short, right? But I'm gonna get Velcroed. I'm a little further back, kinda just messed that up. I gotta throw another one. That was a really bad shot. That's way better. Yeah, so I shanked that, dry, that shot, that was really bad. That was should be a gimme up shot, but I got Velcroed like I said, I talked myself right into it. So I'm gonna have probably a 40 footer, uh, which is worst case scenario from that drive. Um, yeah, that was just my, uh, my bad. I'm even shorter than I thought. So yeah, as you can see, I'm, I'm pretty short. Still got a putt at it, but this is, if I threw that drive in the tournament and le was left with this, I would be very frustrated. Cause I know the straddle putt, a little tree on the left, but <clears throat> hope I can make another straddle. I need to save this. This I was a, shouldn't really be here right now. Get up. Ah, uh, what a dumb par. Yeah, that's a very frustrating par right there. <clears throat> I'm more mad about, you know, obviously I want to make the putt, but I'm more mad that I even left myself with that putt. Um, yeah, that's unexcusable. I was just a flat out shank. I was, I was talking, talking to you. Talking to the mic and telling you guys all the variables, and then I just had that as the last thing in my head, and that's exactly what I did. So that's why I don't think about certain things like that sometimes. But for you guys, I can sacrifice a stroke there. <laughs> all right, hole nine, 320 foot par three. This is a dog leg to the right. Uh, there's a slope up there by the basket, so I'm trying to hit into that slope and just kind of kill it. Uh, land up there on the green. I'm, I haven't really talked too much about it, but I'm gonna start on the left-hand side of the tee pad on this hole, because there's a tree on the right, so I'm gonna do as much as I can to line myself up away from that. And there's a there's a tree long left that you a lot of people throw straight into. I'm definitely cautious of that, so I'm throwing a Firebird, so that way I don't reach that tree as quickly, and I can skip back right and miss that. So throwing a Firebird, trying to get in front of that tree out there that you see overhanging the fairway, and skip right. Like you see, there's a little slope up by the basket, and I'm trying to throw a sidearm into that so it doesn't skip. Oh, that's too low. I might get a lucky skip. No, I got Velcroed. That was way too low. Oh, that was bad. <clears throat> a good angle, good line. I just threw it too low. And uh, yeah, the, the grass is long there. It's not going to skip. I'm left with 50, 60 right now. Ah, stupid. Yeah, that's just too low. Um, nothing else to say about that. Didn't really, th for forgot to throw it. <laughs> that's what I would say. Forgot to throw the disc. That's what I'm thinking in my head. So yeah, that's so far that looks like I'm gonna be, have to make a 60 footer, which is not good on this hole. Um, like you can see what I was talking about. I was trying to hit that hill and kill it and uh, just trickle up by the basket, but I just threw it too short and didn't even, Give myself a chance. This tree on the right here can suck in, suck in a lot of discs. Even if you're inside the circle, you can kind of get no putt out of it. This looks like it might be a spin putt situation because we got a limb. Yeah, we got a limb high. I can't straddle around it or uh, over it. So I'm gonna have to switch my putt up a little bit. I'm gonna go with a spin putt. So I'm gonna spin putt it, just really try and, I'm not really, there's nothing else I'm thinking about besides making it. If I miss, oh, that's, I'll figure that out later. But yes, <laughs> got lucky on that save. That was a good spin putt. Yep, as you can see, this is the hill I was talking about that I was initially trying to hit and just kind of skip it up by the basket. But yeah, it's so thick back there that you're never going to skip. If I would have flew it another 20 feet, I would have hit here and kind of skipped and probably been parked. So I just threw it too short. I knew right out of my hand. 
it wasn't something that I didn't know a variable on this hole. Um, but yeah, I did, at the same time, this tree does force you a little bit lower than you want because when you're coming in, it's, you want to be under this tree. Um, and th that tree over there makes you push you a little wider also than you, than you would like sometimes. Thanks for joining in on the mic'd up round front nine. Be sure to stay tuned to Gatekeeper Media for the back nine.